Today we're going to talk about the War Boss. As your primary HQ choice, probably the one you're going to take more than anything else, uh, the War Boss is uh, one of the most powerful models in the game in close combat that isn't a special character. He's got Weapon Skill 5 and Toughness 5, which means he's going to be uh, immune to instant death from the normal power fist, as well as last cannons. Crack missiles are all just going to uh, wound him instead of giving him an instant death like most marine characters or LR characters or anything, or pretty much any other army. So your war boss is going to have a chance to stick around a lot longer than most HQ choices. Uh, he's also got a wide, very wide uh, variety of options you can take for him. Uh, but there are just a few builds which are common. Uh, this model right here is my very first 40k model I ever put together. It's a warboss with a big chopper. And I do occasionally still use a big chopper and a warboss. Uh, but only if he's with a knob with a power claw. Because I don't want to lose that power claw. He's a lot cheaper this way. And he's still strength 8 on the charge with the big chopper, which is nothing to laugh at. He's still good at anti-tank. Still very good at anti-tank. Uh, and not very expensive. Uh, here's a Power Claw War Boss. This is, of course, the Black Reach War Boss, which I have uh, modified to have a Combi Scorcha. It's a sc uh, heavy flamer from a Dreadnought, Space Marine Dreadnought. Uh, the Power Claw War Boss, of course, is strength 10, because uh, it's double strength. So he will be uh, insta killing just about anything, even other War Bosses. In close combat. Uh, You'll auto pin most tanks in in, uh, in close combat because most of them only have rear armor ten, so he's gonna just uh, wipe out any tank he hits. And the combi scorcher for a mere five points is just is almost too good to pass up. Uh, as far as any war boss goes, though, I'll always run with uh, cyborg body and almost always with heavy armor. Because the extra extra save, the 4 plus instead of the 5 plus against normal attacks, uh, is more useful than you would think. And of course the cyborg body is cheap and it gives him at least some survivability against everything. Another very common uh, way to use a war boss is on a bike. This is my biker boss. And the biker boss is just scary. Uh, first of all, he he gives you a toughness six, uh, which means anything will be pretty much everything will be wounding him on on sixes in close combat that isn't a power fist. Uh, and of course, shooting is, is great because even things like plasma and uh, auto cannons are going to be wounding on threes instead of twos. And being on a bike, of course, he always has the four plus cover save and can turbo boost for that three plus cover save. Uh, this four boss comes in about 150 points depending on the options you take. This one will come in about 80 points, and this one will come in about 120. And of course, there is a Mega Armored War Boss. This is actually a Gasgol model, but I also run him as a uh, Mega Arm as a regular Mega Armored War Boss from time to time. Uh, the downside to Mega Armor is, of course, that the uh, is a slow and purposeful, which means it's going to be not as fast as everything else. But if you put him in, so he does absolutely require a transport uh, if you're going to run Mega Armor. And the two plus save is can be nice. Uh, and if you're running any Mega Knobs, uh, you definitely want to go with the Mega War Boss uh, to go with them. And if, if nothing else, for the boss pull and that extra leadership. And really, how you want to run your War Boss really depends on how you want to play your army. As I said, I'll run this War Boss uh, with the Big Choppa uh, in a unit of Art Boys. Uh, this War Boss will run just about anything, he'll run by himself. Uh, he's also very common to be run with knobs. The biker boss I will frequently run as a lone bike, uh, the only bike in my army. Uh, the only exception is if I'm going to be playing Tau or Vindicators, and I'll usually take a unit of three bikes as ablative wounds, just in case, because I don't want to I don't want him instant kill from those railguns. But other than that, he's just so fast with that turbo boost and the long charge and of course skilled riders so you don't have to worry about those dangerous train tests being an independent character which is always nice 
uh, which is the one benefit of having a Mega Armor War boss by himself. If he's by himself or with, uh, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, the Mega Armor so much because uh, he'll have move through cover. But if you join him with a un another unit, then he loses move through cover and he won't be as fast. Uh, so if he's by himself or with, say, commandos, I guess that's the only other unit in the Orc or Codex with move through cover, uh, then he'll uh, run three dice for the movement instead of two. The war boss will kill anything. There's nothing you need to be afraid of in close combat with a war boss. Uh, you know, it always comes down to dice and if you make all those five plus involve saves or not. But other than that, there really is nothing you have to be afraid of. And of course, running with the big chopper, you get the initiative, uh, which is initiative four or five on the charge, which is definitely nothing to laugh at. Uh, so there's always a good reason to run the big chopper, and that would be the initiative. And if you're running, and it, and it really depends on what you're playing and what you're playing against uh, to make see if it's worth it. Uh, I don't play him very much anymore because uh, I have been uh, I've been subduced uh, subduced by the uh, power claws on the war bosses. This is my most common war boss that I would play uh, because of the power claw and the combi scorcha. Uh, he's just, he's really point efficient and provides a lot of hitting power. So the, the main options for the war boss you can be thinking about, of course, is the cyborg body, uh, which I would consider an absolute must have. If you're running any sort of points into him, uh, then the investment is worth is worth the 10 points to make sure that he can survive anything. He may or may not, of course, because there's always the the chance you'll f you won't roll your five pluses. But just to have that chance in the first place is, is to me is very important. Uh, and the other option that I almost always take would be the attack squig for 15 points. It's basically giving you a second power claw for 15 points instead of 25. That's the way I see uh, the attack squig. It gives you that extra attack, which you can't get any other way. So that with the attack squig, you're talking five attacks on the base and six on the charge. At strength 10 with the power claw or strength 8 with the big chopper. That is, at, and weapon skill 5, of course. You can't forget the weapon skill 5. And that is enough to smash almost anything without too much trouble. I mean, even against Monoliths uh, or Renland Raiders that move 12, I mean, you, if you do move 12, against vehicles that move 12, I mean, Monoliths don't move 12, of course, but Land Raiders that move 12, you hit them with the War Boss, you're rolling six dice, there's a good chance you're going to get a six. At least one six out of six dice. And then you get a 50% chance of damaging it, being strength 10. And against Monoliths, well, you know, the the, the war boss is probably the single best way to take out a monolith because he's going to be hitting on fours at the very least because it can only move six inches and then uh, so you're probably going to get you know somewhere between two and four damage table rolls or, or armor pin chances and with a 50% chance of damage table roll on each one uh, so if you're taking a monolith then the war boss is by far the way to take out a monolith or you just do what everyone else says and ignore the monolith and you just kill Necrons. Get him to phase out. But that's a whole other story. So the war boss is very common, very powerful uh, HQ choice as far as close combat goes. Uh, most people will fear the war boss in close combat and they rightfully should do so. With three wounds and amazing stats. Uh, the war boss will definitely lead your boys to victory time and time again. Well, that's what I have to say about the war boss. Thank you for watching this episode about, of Talking About Orcs.